Camelot 31 here, and <laughs> Kroger, guys. Kroger is on damn fire. They are actually on fire. Like, literally. It, figuratively. Mainly figuratively. There's probably one on fire somewhere right now, but I'm saying... These places are burning to the ground. Oh my gosh. I've got messages. Messages from Kroger Associates. And the big kicker. I got actual confidential documents from Kroger to managers and field managers talking about striking. And what they're going to do if people decide to strike at Kroger. It's pretty disgusting. It's pretty disgusting. And we're going to look at all that very very shortly so if you work at kroger better strap in because we about to go for a damn ride and i'm not talking like a roller coaster i'm talking like a like a roller coaster on fire so kind of like a roller coaster but you die instead of have fun which dying can be fun <laughs> so before we get into this make sure you follow me on instagram and twitter and message me on there that's real important also give the video a, an updoodle y'all with the thumb thing and don't forget to subscribe if you have not. So first things first, we're going to start off with a few employee employee messages that are directly from the spoocy ass associate Reddit. Check this out right here. It's going to blow your mind, baby. So this one right here says, promoted myself to customer. <laughs> That's what my district manager used to say when he, when he was going to fire somebody. He would be like, I'm going to promote him to customer. And I'm like, <laughs> you're a real funny guy. So it says, started with my store, a leader in its district in August 2018 as a cashier and started training at the service desk about six months later. I would say I was doing the job of a backup 40 hours a week as early as January, including throughout my senior year, second semester. Although I didn't start getting paid for it until three months ago. Yep. That's fun. Sounds about right. So they were doing the job and wasn't getting paid for it. Wow. In real Kroger fashion. It says this spring, I started doing some MOD and learned other departments and I took on the promise team in the fall. So as my username is Testament, which it's uh, Kroger CEO, <laughs> I was a good bit invested in the idea of a career with Kroger. But on Thursday, I just hit a wall with all of it. Mostly just the management and the customers put in a two day notice after being talked out of quitting per se. I got to say a lot of goodbyes that were way harder than I thought because throughout the second half of high school, I saw these people more than my real family. It says I had planned on actually putting in a two week yesterday, but I just couldn't take it anymore. I'm now missing out on a 3K intuition reimbursement, if that's any testament. At least I gave them a solid Friday, Saturday closes and handed the bulk of the holiday rush for them without needing to call for backup. This guy right here says, I'm so glad you got out young and didn't waste too much time with Kroger. Yay! <laughs> Everybody saying congrats, 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 every single person. I don't blame you. Shocking. So they're leaving in droves. That guy got the hell out. He couldn't take it. He was thinking he was going to be the damn Kroger CEO one day. That was his username. And now he's the Kroger customer now. <laughs> Didn't make it very far because got a few months in and was like, no, thanks. This is absolutely terrible. Because you see the true face of Kroger when the pandemic started. <laughs> they didn't care. And you're about to see some more. Look at this right here. This is really concerning. Check this out. Our building has 10 employees out with the C virus, including ASMs. No temp check has been done in six months. No mask policy, no distancing. At one point we were told, even if we have someone in our home that is positive of the C virus, we have to work and not quarantine unless we can provide a positive test. There has never been any sanitation done and our area we live in is in critical uncontrolled spread. We desperately need to get a city state representative aware so we can get some sanitation done and get our coworkers tested. I'm currently suffering from symptoms and waiting on my test results. This guy says I work at the same store. It's terrible. This guy says, who the hell's running your store? <laughs> this guy said, until you said Dallas, I thought you were my store. So this is happening on a big scale. So Kroger doesn't even care about the safety of their employees. I'm not going to exactly say I was shocked, but I will say shocking. Check this one out. This is a message I received I literally, literally like an hour before I started to film this. So it says, hey, Camelot, Kroger is on fire right now, which is coincidentally what I just said. They are forcing employees to work who have been exposed to the C-virus. I can tell you this because I've experienced it firsthand. Recently, as in a couple days ago, I tested positive. My girlfriend who works at Kroger with me also had symptoms, but has not yet been tested. Our store management team told her she had to come into work until she tests positive. Even when she was waiting on results and could potentially have the virus. Well, she said F that and called out today and got her results back. And she was, in fact, 
positive. Shocking. Kroger as a whole is so crappy right now. So shocking. They didn't give a damn. They didn't give a damn. Showing symptoms, everybody in the damn house is positive. They don't care. Thank you, my friend, for sending that and also reference to the Reddit earlier as well. So that's crazy as hell. But what about the documents? Straight from the horse's mouth. Is that what the phrase is called? I think it's called straight from the horse's mouth. So check out this document from Kroger to its associates. Check this out. It says, nobody wins with a strike. Shocking. That's why you will see us making contingency plans and advertising for temporary employees. This is not something we want to do, but we must do to continue to run our business and meet customers' needs during the pandemic should a work stoppage occur. I love how they always say, we got to help customers, man. They don't give a damn. They want customers' money is what they want. <laughs> It says, we hope the union won't take this course. This is what it says. It said, a strike threat here is wrong. We are investing significantly in your wages, health care, and pension in our last, best, and final offer. It says, why won't the union give you the opportunity to vote on those investments? Instead, they are asking you to authorize a strike and disrupt your lives. They're so bad. A strike threat also makes no logical sense. Why do it? Why would you do it? <laughs> I love it. Kroger Kroger themselves is saying this to associates. A strike makes no sense, baby, when you could be making the money, son. Why don't you just take the bottom dollar and be happy and smile? I mean, I do it every day and I sell my yacht on Saturday and it's fine. I don't know why you guys would care. Shocking. Can the union really expect to get a better contract by striking and harming the company financially? <laughs> no one wins with a strike. We believe it always does harm and is never any good for anyone. Okay. <laughs> okay. Look at this right here. It says, ask yourself. Check this out. It says, ask yourself. Would you and other associates be better off if a strike is called by the union and you don't receive a paycheck from the company? Listen, listen to that. Just for, damn, that's, that's uh, condescending as hell. It says, the choice is yours. <laughs> damn, that's scary as hell. So Kroger's like, hey, man, a strike's not good for anybody. It's terrible. Why would you want to hurt us financially? We pay you like minimum wage kind of. It's great. Don't worry about it. <laughs> a strike also apparently makes no logical sense and no one wins in a strike. Well, let's be honest. The associates win. Kroger doesn't. That's what they're saying. They're like, nobody wins. And when we say nobody, we mean just us. We don't win. And that's what we're concerned about. Not the safety of our associates. Never. But look at this. Look at this. Uh, this confidential document right here for management use only. Check this out. This is for people who uh, apparently are striking. So it says confidential, do not distribute for management eyes only. <laughs> and all of you as well. It says what management should not do or say you are not to bargain or negotiate with any associates because we care about them. Shocking. Avoid even the appearance of attempting to bypass the union leadership as lawful and exclusive representatives of all associates. Constantly remind the associates that this offer has been presented to the union bargaining committee and your function is to explain and encourage the associates to accept it. You must encourage your associates to not vote for a strike. Encourage them to. So this offer they keep talking about is what they've tried to bribe the union with. Check this out. It's... $500 for full-time associates and $300 for part-time associates. That's it. It's like a one-time thing. So that's the offer they're trying to do instead of actually, you know, do the right thing and let employees go home when they're sick and, you know, pay their employees a livable wage. Yeah, just give them $300. It's called hush money is what it is. It's called shut up money. So they're trying to shut their associates up and shut the union up and basically shut everybody up. Just bribe them a little bit. Let's continue to read this confidential document. It says you should not request any one-on-one -on -one meetings with associates regarding the offer. If any associate asks you to talk to him about it, however, do so. You should say nothing about how the union may or may not conduct a ratification meeting on the negotiations of the company's offer. The union's internal affairs and how they will conduct their business is none of the company's business. And the company cannot control or influence how the union conducts its business, even though right here, it says, your function is to explain and encourage the associates to accept the offer. Yet right here, you say the company cannot control or influence how the union conducts its business. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry about it. You should not give the associates the impression that you're monitoring their discussions regarding the contract. If there is too much talking on work time, however, you can take the normal steps to stop the waste of time. <laughs> don't let them know. 
that you're monitoring their discussions. <laughs> this is creepy. You should not offer your opinion or characterize the union's demand. Stick to explaining the company's offer. Except, you know, make sure the company doesn't control or influence how the union conducts its business. But right down here, make sure you stick to explaining the company's offer, but not the union's opinion. Of course. Avoid any discussion regarding the finality of the company's offer. Never say the company will never give in on this point or that item. The offer and its terms and conditions were given to the union bargaining committee. You are only here to explain it. <laughs> Do not engage in conduct that could be characterized as spying, eavesdropping, or surveillance of union activity, whether inside or outside the store. Look at this. This is hilarious. Don't engage in conduct that could be characterized as eavesdropping. Then right here it says, Do continue to monitor your store operations and associates. <laughs> <laughs> union representatives may not disrupt the performance of duties in your store if an issue arises please contact hr you should keep in mind that your role is to explain the company offer you have the right to express your views so long as they do not amount to a threat or a promise of basically anything better to an associate so as you can see kroger don't give a damn kroger don't give a damn there's people sick in their stores okay people are trying to strike and, and the union's organizing the strike, and uh, Kroger's telling them there's no reason to strike. No one wins. Everyone loses. Mainly, Kroger loses. They're not talking about their associates. And their management team, which got the confidential document, are not allowed to discuss anything. They're only supposed to encourage the associates to take the offer. To take the offer that they've provided. The $500 uh, payment to full-time and $300 payment to part-time. They're encouraging them to take it instead of, you know wanting more or better pay in general shocking and the management's not supposed to influence anybody in any way shape or form except for to encourage the associates to take the offer and also don't forget they're not supposed to eavesdrop but they're supposed to monitor you can't just use a different word don't eavesdrop but make sure you monitor <laughs> that doesn't make no damn sense so as you can see kroger employees are pissed as hell they're pissed people are leaving in droves the place is on fire and it's they're about to strike and Kroger's trying to desperately get their associates to not do so because it will hurt Kroger financially and might push them into actually doing something to help their associates. That's why they don't want to do it because they don't want to help their associates. They want as much money as possible. And you're thinking to yourself, could Kroger afford to give these associates more to actually make sure they're safe, to actually make sure they can go home and pay them for it? Huh, let's see. Kroger reported earnings of $1.907 billion. Billion with an annual revenue of 122.286 billion. So you could say they totally, uh, they totally could, but they don't want to because they don't care. You're seeing the true signs of corporate companies right now, right now, because the pandemic. We're shocked. Everybody's damn shocked. What do you think? Is Kroger crazy as hell? I think they're crazy as hell. But pff, every company sh pretty much is nowadays. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe and make sure you give it a good old fashioned like. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Message me on there. And that way I can get your voice out. Because the reason companies treat associates like this is because they don't think they can speak out. Well, I'll do my best to get your voice out there. So until next time, make sure you guys do me a favor. This is real important. Make sure you get the hell on it. Doggone it. Bye. Yeah. Hell yeah.